Hey, I'm Derek, and I'm going to show you guys how to do some really cool volumetric fog stuff within Redshift, and I'll show you how to how easy it is to set it up and how incredibly fast it is to render. It's insane. So we're going to do some cool fog stuff so you can make stuff like Blade Runner and things like that, that kind of look, and also God rays and things like that for interior scenes. So it's so simple and so quick. Let's take a look at it. Let's check it out. you how easy it actually is okay so we'll start with like a torus just so we have an object that we can kind of shine light through pick that up a bit it doesn't really matter where it is it doesn't have to be perfect i'm just gonna bring that up and we're gonna add a redshift light we're gonna start with the area light because those are what i like to use the most they're my favorite redshift light for sure and we're gonna rotate that around if you hold shift you can rotate it by degrees of 10 and you can change that as well, but I like 10 just fine. So we're going to keep it at an angle. So one quick tip uh, with Redshift Area Lights is this intensity multiplier will obviously make the light a lot brighter. But one thing that will also make the light brighter is how big the light is. Unless you click this little tick down here for normalize intensity. What that will do is no matter how big the shape is, only this number will actually affect how bright it is. So, it's, so we've got this light. And for volumetric light rays, you're probably going to want it to be, you know, a little smaller. Like don't, you know, if you really want it to have like a sharp guide ray look, you're not going to use a big diffusion. You're going to use a sharp hard light. So here's how we do that in Redshift. So what you're going to do is go to Objects, Redshift Environment. And you're like, oh, cool, okay. You can see down here, uh, it's got... Volume scattering, fog, and stuff like that. If you hit render right now, you'll notice that you see that's not doing anything. So what we have to do is under your redshift area lights, go to volume tab, volume contribution, turn that all the way up to one. Okay. And what that's going to do is that's going to tell that light to affect the environment. So now when you hit it, you're going to be like, whoop, boom, way too intense. So you think, okay, I need to turn down the amount the contribution scale but you don't don't do that first I would always adjust the environment before I adjust the contribution scale just because it's easiest to keep your contribution scale to one and then uh, keep that as like default on all of them that way you don't have to set each light individually you can just like know that one is good and we'll adjust the scattering to like 0.05 Okay, so that's still pretty intense, but here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to go to the area light. We're going to go to the general. And if you go down here, you see we have a rectangular light. That's fine, but this little info down here called spread, we're going to cut that down. And what that's going to do is going to boom. It's going to turn this super wide area light into a really sharp spotlight. So now we can kind of turn this down. Yep, so boom, just like that. I keep saying boom. Just like that, we now have, and look how fast this renders. We have a nice volumetric light coming through with these god rays and shadows coming through. And it's really nice. And you can uh, do it with portal lights and stuff in Windows, but I mean, you can really fake it with a nice, uh, nice light here. So you make it real wide, it's going to fog up the whole thing. Smaller. It's going to be more of an intense light. And so another thing we can do, let's turn the spread up just a bit. You can increase the samples in your volume light under your area lights tab. But if you have more than one area light, it just makes more sense to do it at the end, I think. Uh, I like to just do it at the end where I control all the volumes samples at once and I don't have to go through each light and do them individually. So what we're going to do here, if you see this, it's kind of noisy right here. We can turn bucket rendering on so we can get a little bit. And we're just going to render view this box here. We're going to hit this little button here or hit R. It actually enables render window. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to settings in our Redshift tab. We have down here under volume, we're going to replace the samples. And we're probably going to go 1024. And you can see how nice that's going to clean that up. So it's still not great. So we're probably going to have to go up to 248. There we go. That's looking nice. There you go. 
we can actually turn this down to point zero zero three as well that, that'll help clean up a little bit but really it's just going to be it's literally just your volume samples uh, we can turn up our light samples to that might not not hurt but every time you increase these numbers you're gonna you're definitely going to increase your render time but those two together you see how fast this still is like you don't have to change these these only really i don't say only but they mainly affect depth of field and motion blur so you actually don't even need to mess with these until you're dealing with those things. So look, I mean, just that's awesome. Let's watch how fast this fog is. I don't know if you've ever used like fog with any other render or whatever, but it's not near this fast. It's this is insanely quick, and this has got high clean settings on it. So one thing I'm going to turn on is I'm going to put on my GI, my global illumination. I'm going to have brute force, brute force set to both. Brute force is the most accurate. It's not as fast as a radiance point cache, as a radiance cache, but actually it's going to be a little more accurate. And honestly, with this scene, it's simple enough that it's not going to be that big of a deal. So I'm going to turn that on. That's just going to kind of let the light bounce around inside the fog itself, which is awesome. So it's going to bounce back off the floor and go back up. And you see, you just have these really nice rays here we're gonna actually bring this light back down to about 0.5 now we're gonna turn off this we're just gonna go back to progressive render so let's say you want to set up a cool new blade runner style fog like a big environment fog so what i've got here is i've got the exact same disc i had i just kind of pulled out some planes and uh, some polygons and extruded them up to make these little buildings I've put a spotlight just back here off to the side looking down. You could use a uh, infinite light or an area light if you want, but a spotlight's really good just because it's automatically like this nice cone shape. So all you have to do is in your spotlight tab, go to volume, contribution all the way up, have a redshift environment. And then what I've done is I've tinted it this kind of cool dark orange. Uh, always kind of go a little bit darker with your fogs and the color you want the fog to look like because the way it works is the light bounces around in the fog so it's going to look brighter than the color you pick so if I pick this my fog is going to look kind of more like this near the light now the way phase works is it is whether it affects it towards the camera like the way the camera is looking or if it affects it the way the opposite way the camera is looking so if I look away from the light now, if I'm looking with the light, my camera sees that it's super bright back here. But if I look against the light with my camera, it's actually pretty dark and it's not traveling as far. But if I turn my phase up above zero, it's going to be brighter looking at the light. But now if I'm looking with the light, it's going to be darker and not go as far. So let's say you want to do it totally profile sideways shot, right? So then how does the phase affect it that way? Turn the phase up, turn the phase down. You'll see it's kind of got darker towards the light, brighter, more powerful effect away from the light. And then on this side, brighter, more powerful effect towards the light darker away from the light so we'll, we can right click here and put that back to zero and it's going to be even all the way through it and we can start messing with this and what this is going to do attenuation is going to it's such a small little number it's ridiculous but it is going to determine how far the light travels through the fog regardless of your camera angle okay so phase is a reaction to the camera angle itself the attenuation is actually just going to affect the amount that the light travels through the fog. So play with those two together. Um, I like to use phase more normally just because it's easier to kind of fiddle around and get that feeling right rather than going in little tiny little micro fraction numbers here. But whatever works for you. Um, so there you go. Okay, one more thing I want to show is the actual fog settings under the Redshift environment map. I've got a dome light with a uh, Grace Gorilla HDR map on it. And so I've got my environment. And under my dome light, volume is, of course, set to 1. Redshift render view. 
aggressive. That is very bright because we actually have scattering on. We don't want scattering on. So now we have actually just want this fog emission. So we're going to take this color and we're going to bring it up to a nice white. So you can realize that that doesn't do anything until you affect the attenuation. Now attenuation affects fog a lot <laughs> as it affects the scattering as well, the volumetric lighting as well. So let's turn up our attenuation. You can see we kind of have this nice... Let's click that up a little bit. It's really annoying how you have to do it because um, it's such small numbers. But there we go. So now you can see, I can kind of see a little bit here, but by the time I look back there in the distance, it's pretty dense, and that's good good fog settings. So now the height of the fog, you can actually control the way the fog, how tall the fog is. If it's zero, it's going to be all the way from the bottom to the top, all the way. Uh, if you do a height of, let's say, let's do, what, is that 75? Yeah, so there you go. So 75 off the ground, it's going to show up. But the cool thing about the redshift environment is you can actually move it around. So if I actually grab it, yes, and I pull it up, I can actually adjust the, the height that way. Or if I wanted to for some cool fake effect, I could turn it that way or do like a completely horizontal where half was in fog and half wasn't for some trippy effect or put it in the background or put it in the foreground very cool so you can actually move it all around and it works that way but if you just want it to be from infinity to beyond just set this to zero and horizon blur is going to do exactly what it suggests if you have a height on it uh, you'll have a horizon line if it's at zero it'll be um, it'll be pretty sharp but if it's all the way up, it's going to just blur that horizon line a little bit. This is exactly what it says. Um, there you go. Fog. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.